Hey friends, in today's video I'm making a hair, a sailor style hair bow and these are the colors that I'm using but I'll also um, put it in the description box below the colors I'm using as well. I'm talking fast because I'm, the clips are going so fast. And then um, you need scissors, a ruler, and I'm going to show you how to make a template for the tails on the bottom. So I'm using a thick cardstock paper but you can use whatever kind of paper you want. Um, and I'll write down the measurements too, as you'll see. So don't worry, it'll all be easy peasy. Um, and I also did this video before, but I didn't have a voiceover. So I want to start redoing my videos, like at least the tutorials um, and add voiceovers because I think it'd be easier to follow. So yeah. And this brown template is the one that I usually use, so I'm just tracing it and measuring it out for you guys. So the bottom and the top line are both 6.5 centimeters, and as you can see, and the thickness, I already forgot what it was, 5.5 centimeters. So you're pretty much just making a rectangle and then marking the middle of the rectangle. There could be an easier way to do this, but this is the way I did it both ways and this is just for the size that I make and I mine are usually smaller than what than what I've seen so you can always play around with it obviously and make one that's the size of your liking so I just drew a line in the middle and then I'm gonna add the corners and they're each they're each three centimeters so I keep my ruler, I don't, but I should hold it down at that corner where the three is and then move the other one so it reaches that line and then you make your marks and then you do it for the rest of the corners and then you have your template for the, the teal pieces. And now I'm just typing, not typing, writing the measurements on the inside because we're going to cut out this template. You don't have to do this, but I like to know how the measurements of everything, just in case I want to make something bigger or smaller, then I can, I have a baseline of that. And it's not perfect, but it's not a big deal. It ends up working out in the end, so yeah. So like I said, we're going to cut it out and then go from there. And this is the fabric that I'm using. It's kind of like a, a light robin's egg blue. That's what it reminds me of. And I just cut a smaller piece out because my desk that I'm filming on, I, it's too small to like unfold that and then um, measure my bow out, obviously. So I just cut a smaller one. And I'll mention, I'll have both of the linen shops or fabric shops that I use down below too. And now I'm just making the lines of the fabric straight so I can cut it. So I'm measuring a 2.75 inches. That's how thick the bow is going to be. So that's what I'm doing right now. So it's 2.75 by 5.75. And I'm going to mark that. And I always get asked, asked this, but this is a linen fabric that I'm using. I pretty much always use linen. And then for the middle part of the bow, it doesn't really matter how long it is, just the thickness. So I usually just add it to the top of whatever measurement I'm going at. And as long as it's one and a half, I believe. And I trace out my the tails and then cut them out. So for the tails, I'm just folding it in half, and I'm going to iron that, as you'll see. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter the right sides to, together or not, if you're using just a solid linen, because you're not going to, we're going to sew some stuff, so all the lines, if you have lines, will be hidden anyway. And this is a mini iron. I get asked about this thing a lot too. I just got it on Amazon. And 
to search mini iron and that one will be one of the first ones that pop up at least it was for me so and then for this the middle part I'm just folding it into thirds and I'll iron it as well it's kind of hard to do this with nails I usually don't have nails but I got bored one day and I decided that I wanted to do my nails and I did and that's what we're working with right now so and then for war the top part of the bow I don't know the names of the different parts of bows so yeah just go with me <laughs> I just iron it to get it warm and then I fold it in half lengthwise to make a crease but I don't iron that crease or anything I just want to know mark the middle of it and then I fold this was kind of tricky I don't know why I didn't just do it on the table underneath the ironing board but I didn't so you're going to bring the top edge and the bottom edge to meet at the middle and then you're going to iron that once I can figure out how to do that And I'm trying to go really slow because my I have my I film with my phone and it's hold I have like this unstable tripod thing holding my phone and if I move fast or anything it shakes it so I don't want to do that so that's why it's going really slow and then I fold this in the middle to mark the middle as well and then have the ends meet in the middle I said middle a lot but you can see and then I'll iron that down as well both the front and then I'll flip it over and do the back as well the neighbor has also decided to start mowing their grass so if you hear that in the background I apologize I'm actually inside doing the voiceover usually I do them outside but it's too hot and the kids and my husband were at a flea market so I had the house to myself so so I just finished ironing those and I am going to be adding some embroidery to these because I usually do and I'm actually making this for my daughter because she even though I used to make bows and have a bow shop she actually doesn't have that many bows so and she starts school this month so that I'd start stocking her up on some bows and I'm using the dark green I use two threads always and once I thread it then it makes like four threads kind of oh, in in the middle what I was pointing out you uh, if you're embroidering too you kind of want to avoid that area because you're going to be pinching that kind of to make the bow so you don't really see it unless you I don't you don't want to do the chunk of the embroidery in the middle but you could do some if you wanted to blend embroidery throughout so anyway I'm just doing oh and this it speeds up I don't just do real-time embroidery because that would take a long time and I feel like if you clicked on this video you clicked on it so you could learn how to make the sailor bow not how to embroider a sailor bow so yeah and I don't show it, but after every French knot, that's what I'm doing right now, I uh, cut it and tie it off. But I don't add that because the video would have been really long. So, but just so you know. So you don't see all the lines through the back. Because linen's kind of thin. Well, this one is. So, like a lightweight. So you could, you'd be able to see the trigger threads behind it. So, that's what I'm doing. And also, I just started uploading on Mondays my packing videos for the week, but I actually didn't get any orders this past week, which is fine, because I actually, not that I like it, but I do kind of like it, because I'm trying to focus on making um, stuff for my August drop, and now I'm taking the light green, as you can see 
for my August drop and some fall items and stuff. And when I have orders, um, it's not like everything is 100% ready to ship. Like I have to, uh, if I don't have it made, I have to make it. But if I have it made, I have to still put it on a glass dome and then add it to a backing and all that and then pack the order and stuff. So it's not like I'm just grabbing stuff and packing it. There's always some something that has to be made. So, and that takes time, which I don't, obviously I don't mind doing. Otherwise I wouldn't have a shop, but it's nice to get like a week off so I can focus solely on um, stuff, new things that I want to try and make or just getting ready for future drops and stuff. So yeah, I don't mind it at all. So now I'm just doing something called a lazy daisy stitch. And I actually have a tutorial on how to do not just this, but a bunch of flowers. And you could do, I was going to do the woven wheel stitch, but I do that a lot. So I wanted to do something different. And I think I have a playlist actually of how to do different flowers. And I'll link that down below. They're, they don't have voiceovers though, but eventually I'll remake them and they will. So that's what I'm doing right now. Just adding it to all the dots. And I was just going to do the top part of the bow. But then I ended up doing the bottom. Oh, and the colors I showed in the beginning, the pink and the orange type color, rust color, I ended up not doing because I kind of liked the monochromaticness of this. So I just kept it with these two colors. So now you're going to take the tails and you're going to sew around it, leaving a gap in the middle, as you will see. Just leave that middle part unsewed. And I usually just line up the edge of the fabric with the edge of the presser foot, the inner part of the presser foot. So whatever seam allowance that is, that's what I do for these bows. Uh, and my machine became unthreaded, so I'm threading it real quick. You can see. And then, yep, I'm just gonna sew around the tails except for the middle part. And also if you have any videos that you want to see me make or remake, um, just let me know in the comments and I can add it to my list or if it's a remake I can get going on that because I know it's easier for some people to listen and follow along instead of reading the captions that I put and doing it. So yeah, just let me know. And I guess now is a good time, as any, to mention that if you want to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And I also have my Instagram link below if you want to follow more along, because I do my updates and more personable, I guess, things over there. So. And then there's that. And I just trim the threads and cut the corners. And then I take a pair of tweezers and flip it inside out. Or I guess right side out. But I always grab from the non embroidered side because you don't want to pull out the embroidery because that would suck and then you'd have to do it all over again but if you did embroider then obviously you can do whatever you want but still be gentle because linen isn't as tightly woven I guess as cotton or some other fabrics so you could still pull threads from it and that also wouldn't be good and I also have this kebab skewer stick right there that I doled at the end and I just um, push out the corners so they're more pro they're more prominent <laughs> and then so once that done is done I iron the tails I didn't show that but it's ironed a little bit it doesn't have to be perfect and then I grab my hot glue gun it looks disastrous so ignore that and I definitely glued it to this paper bag 
but that's all right. It comes with a stand if you order one of these, but mine broke off. <laughs> it's Surebounder. <laughs> Got it on Amazon. I should probably get another one because that does not look good. It has wax melts, all sorts of stuff on it. But anyway, so you don't have to do this part, but I find that it's easy, makes things easier if you just do a little dab of hot glue on the outer corners of the top of the bow and then meet the edges in the middle like so and then take a little bit more glue oh and I if you redo this in a different size or anything this is just what I like I like the length of the bow and the top part of the tails to be about the same size I think that looks nicer or it looks nice I like it so that's what I try and do I know that there are shops that have like thicker tails, which also looks cute. I haven't messed around with that idea, so I just stick with this. So then once that's glued, you just kind of, oh, I'm doing the tails first. So this is kind of tricky, um, especially if you have nails on. Um, you just want to fold in the middle and you want the top of the tails and the bottom edge of the tail is to go back and then like that if that makes sense kind of fold it in half and then yeah push those back and then um, add a little bit of hot glue to it you don't have to I don't think when I first started making these I didn't do hot glue I just that's why I have the thread back there I would just tie it with thread because it makes it more like cinched in looking and I like how that looks. I still use a thread, you'll see. But for the sake of this video, and it does make it easier and all that, I just did a little bit of hot glue on all the folds. Now make sure it dries and then just get it stuck to your fingers and then try and put it down and realize it's still kind of stuck there. Um, now for the top part of the bow, is it's easier obviously. All you do is fold it like we did with the tails and then fold the top and bottom back. And this is actually similar to how I make my basic hairstyle, or not hairstyle, basic bow. I have a video on that too, I think. And so you could just make this top part and put the middle part on and then you've got a hair bow too. So, but anyway, so I just add a little bit of glue to all the folds on this part too and then I grab the tails and add a dot of glue and I don't I didn't used to do this either I would also tie the thread around the top and the bottom and then I would add the hot glue at the end which you could do as well but it is easier to do it this way so whatever you want to do there's tons of ways to do different to do this anything so this is how I'm doing it for this video. So I just wrap the thread around if you didn't want to hot glue it or if you wanted to do both like I'm doing and then I just tie it in a knot but you'll see how it like cinches a little like like that. See? So that's why I do it. But also there's the middle part so I don't know if it actually does anything but I still do it anyway. And then just trim it. You can kind of mess around with it and shape it how you want. I think when I was editing this, I'm like, it would be cute if you got like a leather cord type thing and wrapped it around and did a little knot instead of this linen middle. I think that'd be cute too. I've never done that. So, well, I have, but not with this, not with the sailor bow. But I think that'd be cute. But anyway, so you take your middle, glue it, the edge. To the bottom and you want the most of the fabric to go facing the back like that and if you were going to put a nylon on this is when you would do that so um, I think sailor bows on nylons with on little babies is my favorite there's it's so cute because they're kind of 
big and they're a unique shape. So I really like that. Even when Everly was a toddler, I would still put a nylon with this bow on her and it still looked cute. But anyway, so I'm just trimming the end to make it even. And then you want to tuck it. This is also hard to do with nails, but you're just kind of tuck it the end in so you don't see that raw edge like this and then you're going to take a little bit of glue and just a little bit because you'll obviously see it if it's a lot and it just doesn't look as nice um but if you're making it for yourself then it really doesn't matter so like this <laughs> um and then just hold it so it's till it dries and then that's pretty much it. You can still shape it a little bit if, and move it around until it's at your liking. But this is pretty much how I make my sailor bow. I think it turned out cute. So, yep. So I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you guys next week. And thanks so much for watching and all that. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment and let me know what you think of it. Oh, and that's the back. So, yep. So, thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys next week. Bye.